Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got this really cute gift box, which is a kind of newer version of my Oriental gift box that I made last year. And those are inspired by fruit boxes in China where I live. So this I'm gonna call my fruit box. And it really is very, very simple to make, but it really does, I think, stand out from the rest. It's just got a really nice look about it and I think it looks very elegant. Now I've gone quite different in terms of style. I've gone very muted, I've gone tone on tone, I've gone pastel. So um, yeah, very different, but um, you know, still gorgeous. So this one I'm holding like this because I haven't stuck it down because I want to fold this, keep it um, stored flat for the time being. So you just open up the Velcro and then inside you'll see there you've got a really nice roomy gift bag but it just means now that I can just pop out all of this until I need it and I can just store it flat there I'll have to kind of have it sticking out the top of the rest of them but at least I can still keep it flat or I could even put that on you know if you do want to store them just keep put a paper clip with that next to it and stick that on right on the you know the kind of time when you need it anyway it really is straightforward to make and I've used a fancy die for the decoration on the top there. I'll just fold all that back in again, like so. And I just really love, look at all that detail on there. Now I did fussy cut around the outside. I'm gonna show you and talk you all through it because um, you know there may be a few of you that have got lots of different kind of, um, of these edge dies that you want to use. So. Yeah, let's get into it. Really, really lovely. And the size is six by three. So again, lots of room in that one. It's my squeaky chair. <laughs> I've got to get it sorted. Okay, so you don't need a calculator. That's just fallen on top. Let's get rid of that. So for today, you are going to need two pieces. Pop that to one side. Okay, so you're going to need two pieces of nine and a half by 12. Okay, now the length may vary depending on what you want to do with it. Okay, so you may well be able to use nine and a half by 11 or even A4 length, 11 and three quarters. Okay, so just watch the tutorial and then you can kind of decide, you know, what it is you want to do. Now I'm aware looking at this that the score lines, unless I hold them up, you're not actually going to see me score them, but I'll still talk you through and then I'll hold it up. So along the nine and a half inch side, you want to score at six and nine and a half okay really easy so there's the six and the nine and a half so you have this half inch tab okay then rotate it so that half inch tab is towards the bottom and you want to score it three seven and a half and nine so again if I just hold that up there's my three there's my seven and a half and there's my nine then flip it over so that half inch tab is now facing the top and you want to score at five and a half past that first half inch score line and down to the second score line. So just hold that up there so you can see I've just gone past that half inch one and just down to the second one. Okay, so that's all the scoring. Now you want to do that on two, you'll have two pieces of this, so you want to do exactly that again on the other piece. And then with my ruler, what you want to do is you will have your half inch tab on this right hand side. And then you'll have your nine and a half, um, seven and a half inch, sorry, <laughs> six inch score line, okay? So this is along that nine and a half inch side. So this is the six inch score line, and this is that nine inch score line. That was right now, I've moved my, yeah. Okay, so you want to basically, God, it is, I am struggling here with you guys. Let me, I'm gonna draw a pencil, a very light pencil mark on this, and then you will be able to see where I'm talking and what I'll do is I'll put a um, template in the in my blog I'm not going to put pencil everywhere because I want to rub this out but very lightly so there is your nine um, sorry there's your six and your nine okay then you've got two going across this way Okay, and you've then got that little 
five and uh, was it five and a half? I'm not doing very well today, am I? Yeah, and then you've got that five and a half inch score line that you just scored to this six inch score line, okay? It's on that line there that we're going to be doing this next lot of scoring, okay? So this is that score line that just goes to this six inch score line here. It's within that area that you're going to do your next lot of scoring. So what you want to do is with your ruler, because now you can see where I'm working. So tab on your right hand side, you've got this square, rectangle, rectangle. The third area, so this rectangle here, is what we're working in just above this score line that just goes to this six inch one. Okay, so not on that score line but the one above, the one that does go right across, you want to pop your ruler and you want to do a little marker at three quarters of an inch. Just do a little indent in your card from this bit here in three quarters of an inch. And then again, from the tab, from the half inch kind of score line, again you want to come in at three quarters of an inch and do a little marker. Then from that marker, you're going to score from there down to the bottom left or right hand corner of that rectangle. So I've just drawn a pencil. So that's going to be a score line for you. And then again, from that other three quarter of an inch down to that corner. Okay, so then you will have this. All right, if I just hold that there so you can see where you are. Tabs on the right and then just work your way down that way. And each of these are coming in at three quarters of an inch. But you will score all this, obviously not pencil it. Now you want to do that on both pieces. Okay, now I'm going to leave the pencil marks on here while I cut into this one because I think it'll be easier. So next you want to start doing some cutting. So keeping it like this along the bottom here, this is our base. So you just want to cut up these two score lines. Okay, so this one, I would say uh, burnish it now as well actually before you cut, but I just don't want to, but I don't want to make that pencil kind of um, set too much in the card, so I'm not going to for the minute. But burnish or cut is entirely up to you. So you just cut these three pieces. This one here is going to be your tab, your side tabs for your base. So you just want to take a little wedge off both of those sides, like so. And then this piece, just along the score line there, just remove completely. Okay. Then turn it so now it's on this side. And you're going to cut right the way down this one. So I'm actually going to remove that pencil so it's one less thing for me to rub out. Okay, and then rotate again, and then you're going to miss that score line because we're just going to cut this whole piece out now, but really neatly because all of this is going to be exposed, and depending on what die you're going to put on it, you may well have that all as your flap to close it. Okay, so now that is what you should have. Now you want to do that on both pieces, okay? So I'm just going to get this all rubbed out. Okay, so you will now have two pieces that look like this. I've left the pencil on there because this one I'm going to cut into again, but two pieces. So now just carefully, if you've cut into it already like me, just go and burnish all of those score lines. Okay, and then these ones here, you just turn it on its side and kind of lift it up, just so you're kind of pinching that there and again on that side just lift it up and then that one you just want to just pinch in okay so you can kind of now see that that's going to be the side so if you just put that one down and that one down that's how that's going to be and basically that width there is the same width when it's closed in as that kind of piece here which is going to flap over okay so there's my two so now this is when you want to kind of die cut your fancy edge, okay? Now this edge that I've got here is six inches. Now this was given to me by my mum, but I think it's Crafter's Companion, because most of my ones are from there and it's very similar. Um, so I believe it's from there, but I'll double check with her and I will share links in my blog. Now basically what you're going to do is we're going to be running, my one is going to go perfectly along here. I have to cut in a little bit but it will sit within there, okay, just. Now, you can either cut direct into this, right, and run it through your die machine, and the way you do that is just fold it under 
like so and then you will put just that bit through your plates so this is your plates you go with that score line there I'm going to put it right up to the edge of my plate and then put my die on there and put my top plate on again just up to the edge obviously put some tape on that and run that through and basically it won't damage any more any of this and it will just cut that piece through and then just roll it reverse it back through again okay now I'm going to actually I done that and then I put another piece of cardstock behind it and fussy cut around it and that's how I got that there so I cut that, that's attached, the detail is attached to this, like I just showed you there. And then the back piece I done separately. And you can see it's stuck here, this is a separate piece. Now that worked fine, but I think it's going to be easier to keep this all together and die cut this separately. Okay, so what I've got here is a piece of card and I've put some double sided tape on the back. And the tape I use, or sheets even, are these, the A4 double sided tape sheets by Stick To Anything. Um, it's www.stick2.co.uk and I've used these for quite a while now and they're really really good. You get five A4 sheets. So what I've gone and done is just peeled off the backing of one side and stuck it onto the back of my cardstock. Now I'm going to pop that on there sandwich it between my plates. Now because it's got that double sided tape it will take a few kind of um, passes through your machine to cut so I'm just gonna put this through maybe three or four times. Okay so I've just run that through maybe about four times. Just pop that back out of the way and now hopefully this will have cut through and you're usually to yeah you can see now don't worry if you know if it's not gone through both if, if it, don't worry if it's not gone through the very back piece of backing because that actually is the bit you're peeling off anyway okay so if I just take this off and then it should start to come out which it is now this is very detailed so I just want to be quite careful and it's already taking out the pieces that are so obviously they're stuck in which is fine just very carefully there we go and I don't want to take my backing off yet but I can poke the rest of them out in a minute now I'm just going to because obviously this is for the side of like a gatefold card this particular kind of die or for lids um, flaps like we're doing so I'm just going to just tidy up and straighten off the edges there I'll be trimming that off again in a minute take all of that out later Okay, so now what I've got is this. So I just need to, usually this die, the pieces just fall out, but because we've got that double-sided tape in, I do need to kind of just help it along because it is kind of sticking, I guess, to the sides. Now on the back here, you can see there's my backing, okay, which I don't want to pull, pull off yet. I just want to go along and get all these pieces. So I'm just going to do that. Okay, so now that's everything taken out. There's a bit of the white in the middle there, but that, there you go, doesn't matter. So now what I'm going to do is just grab my trimmer and I just want to tidy off that edge. Okay, so now I've just got a nice piece there. So it's very delicate. Like I said, you know, depending on what you've got, I will show you what to do if you don't have this, so don't worry. So now I'm going to grab, decide what piece you want to be your front and back. So now I'm just going to remove all of this backing and now you have a perfect intricate die that's full of adhesive okay again if you don't have the backing sheets all I would say now is put the glue on the back of your hand which I like to do and dab your die over that so now I'm going to stick actually I've just realized I've still got my no because I'm going to use that one sorry because that was the one I'm going to cut that's going to be my back so right, I still had the pencil on it okay so this area here is all going to be your flap, so I'm just going to very, very carefully, sorry, I'm just going to take it out of shot a minute just so I can make sure that I'm getting it in the centre, do it that way actually, just want to make sure I get an even amount, there we go. So I'm just following that score line and then just bring that down. Again, you can use any colours, any theme, I'm just going for this real nice 
understated effect. Now that looks like it is part of that card because it's right on that join. It just gives a really, really nice effect. Again, it's one of those things, it's so much nicer in person. Um, but again, I think it still looks really nice. So now I'm going to fussy cut. I'm just going to very carefully just go around. Obviously, if you've got any digital um, machines, you'd be able to get it to do this for you. But I'm now just going to go around, just like I did with this one here, and just get that nice effect. Okay, so there you go. That took me literally not even five minutes. So now I have this really lovely closure this front flap to my gift box and I absolutely love it. It's going to look so nice when it's all obviously hanging over. So that's my front. This piece here, which was exactly the same, all you want to do now is take this piece off. So actually what I can tell you is you don't need two pieces of the same size to start with, do you really? Just thinking about it because you've actually removed all of that, which is actually a good size piece of card. So I will... Um, put a little note on my blog. That's why I always say watch my tutorials, you know, um, first so that um, then obviously now I can say that actually you only need a piece of cardstock which will be, so one will be that size but this piece only needs to be um, nine and a half by nine. Okay, so yeah, right. Next we need to stick them together. So this one is going to go on there like so. So I'm just going to grab some of my wet glue. And you're going to pop it onto the back of your tab here. Also what I didn't do there is just take a little wedge off of these. It'll just stop you getting any overhang. And then flip it over and just you're sticking it from the score line, that's your top. So you're sticking it from, this is your baseline and then that first score line there. So just line it up with the side, like so. Just fold it over and then you can just burnish it. And you just wanna make sure it's nice and flush with that piece. Okay, so that's that one. Then with this one here, fold this one in. And again, pop some glue on there. And then this piece can fold straight over, keeping it all nice and flat, and it should just perfectly line up. And that, 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 you know, is an indication that you've done all your score lines correct and your cutting's all been nice and lined up. And again, I'm just using my bone folder there just to make sure it's all nice. Okay, so I would say at this point now, if you want to, so I'm putting my handle on the top, top, on the top. <laughs> I'm putting my handle on the top here. So it looks like a handbag. But if you want to add ribbon and have hole punches, I would say pop them on this side piece here, okay? Because it won't interfere the lid. So maybe if you're gonna put something really heavy in it, you might wanna have your handle coming from the side and not the hat, not the, the flap. Because obviously if this is too heavy, I mean it shouldn't do, but that could obviously open. Whereas if you attach it here, then that won't happen. So it's entirely up to you. But at this point here now, I would say pop your hole punches in there while it's easy to do. Next, you want to then bring in your back, then your sides and this piece and stick it all down, okay? And then you just squeeze in the sides there because we've already burnished these score lines. Just squeeze them in, pop that flap down and then this one should perfectly line up, giving you that gorgeous gift bag. Isn't that lovely? So now I'm gonna add my Velcro dot you could use a magnet if you want you could hole punch there and there and put some ribbon through you know there's so many lovely ways to fasten it so again don't worry if you don't always have all these pieces because there's so many nice ways and also that fastening that I done on my multi loop gift bag is it the multi loop I can't remember which one it was where I had it so that it just kind of slid inside um, that's another nice way, okay? I've just realised I didn't show you what to do if you don't have the dies, but it's fine, I can talk you through that. So I'm just bringing that down, I've stuck my Velcro there. I'm just gonna open up the base and just put some pressure on there. So where it was originally this shape, all you need to do is I'd say come in 
um, a centi centimeter, come in an inch on both sides of that flap and then cut from that one inch up to the corner here and it will just give you that kind of effect okay or you might have an edge um, punch some of the longer ones you could go along and punch that and just have a nice kind of just trim or any other border dies you might have they might not be full ones like this they might just be the ones that go along the straight line you could use that but yours will be coming down like this obviously where it was before I done all that so like I said, you could come in half an inch, you could do a triangle cut, and if you want to, you could grab any circle dies or a plate, draw around it, and you could have a nice curved effect as well. So there's loads of different ways that you can obviously decorate that. Okay, so pop all that back in again. Now you can keep it like that, you might not even want to add handles, you might want to keep it more of a, a gift box style. But to make the handle, you just need a piece of nine by one inch. Okay, so I've got the same colour here. 9 by 1 inch and you want to score at 1 and 8 inches so there's my 1 inch score line and my 8 inch score line and then basically just fold it up I guess or down it doesn't really matter because what you're going to do now is in between those score lines just with your bone, bone folder it's the evening I've lost the will to be able to talk there we go and then those bits are going to stick out like so and that now will sit lovely on the top there okay so I'm gonna get that stuck down now I haven't cut any circle little dies it was just for detail really um, show you here so I just die cut some of my smallest circle dies there and just die cut three on each side laid them on top of each other you see they got a bit of dimension there it was just literally just for decorative reasons so I'm gonna do that off camera but then all you need to do is where did I put my Got my embellishments here so in the middle of this there was just this nice kind of area and I thought it was perfect for a little flat back gem so I'm just gonna grab one there I always like to put a little bit of glue just to keep it nice and secure and you can obviously move them around a little bit as well and there you have it obviously yours will be stuck down but mine is going to be stored flat for the time being but there you have it isn't that gorgeous absolutely stunning really like these would we'll definitely be making more of them and I think it's just a slightly easier version of the oriental box that I've done and this is trying to just evolved from that but yeah this is my fruit box so I hope you've liked these I think they are so cute um, if you have please give me a thumbs up as always and subscribe to my channel to see more thanks for watching bye